topic here. We have started the recording. Let me share my screen. So in the uh, today and the next sessions, we will basically be covering the PYQs. So we have around uh, eight to ten PYQs. So we will be covering uh, each PYQ one by one. So today we will be covering the uh, twenty-three Jan AN term paper. Let's go through through the paper. So the first question is this one. Hopefully this is this, yeah yeah it's visible now right yeah yeah so here we have like a example or a manual page of how the angle bracket round bracket works. So this basically executes the command that is inside and stores it in a temporary file. So not exactly a file but like a pseudo file. So something that acts like a file but is not a file in your uh, system so it actually won't take up space in your system it's just a pseudo file and the output of this will be the path to that pseudo file so you can also see it uh, mentioned here process substitution allows the process's input or output to be referred to using a file name it takes the form of this one or this one a uh, process list is run asynchronously so whatever you write in this will be done asynchronously and its input or output appears as a file name. So you will get a file name and you can use that file name to give it to a command that takes a file name. So for example, here if I have let the command which is ls in my home directory, so it will print a few folders which are there in my home directory. So if I put this inside this round bracket, and here if I do echo, so if I just print what is being returned by this entire thing, so here you can see it returns a path to a file. It returns slash dev slash fd slash 63. So the fd means file descriptor. So this is basically not a real file, but uh, file-like structure. So fd is the file descriptor and 63 is the id. So every time we run this, we get a uh, different ID based on how many things we are running. So for example, here, because uh, we have around 62 file descriptors already being used. So whenever I'm running this, this is using the 63rd. If I, let's say, run two, three things parallelly, then it will take 64, 65, etc. So this is just a, a path where this is temporarily stored. And after this execution is completed, this will be deleted. So for example, if I do, let's say, ls dev fd 63, so now you can see there is no such file or directory. So only when this is being uh, executed, this file exists. So if I run instead of echo, if I run cat, which is basically me doing cat and then uh, dev fd63. So there you can see inside that file, we have the contents of the ls tilde, which is the home directory. So that pseudo file kind of stores the output of the command. And this entire thing returns not the output of the command, but the path to that file which stores the output of the code. So in this question, we are also given, then, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a bit uh, unclear uh, to me. Uh, like uh, you have given ls tilde, so that is your home directory. So uh, yes. the, uh, the dev fd63, is it a directory inside your home directory? No, no, no. So as I mentioned, right, this is a temporary file that is created by bash whenever I use this syntax. So less than round bracket, round bracket. So whatever I run inside this, it will be executed and stored in a temporary file. So this is the temporary file where this output is stored. So this output is the output of ls tilde, right? So if I uh, run normal ls on my home directory, you can see I have these folders, right? Docs, down, music, NPP, fix, programs. So this is the output. And this output is stored in a temporary file. So if I try to print the contents of this file now after that has been done, so then you will get no such file or directory. So this only exists at the time when we are running this. So if I do this, so then it, this command is being executed. Its output is being stored in this temporary file. And this thing, so less than round bracket and then running some command, this returns this path. So this is basically same as running cat slash dev slash fd slash 60. And this thing also actually runs the ls command and stores its output in the temporary file. So this is actually not done one after the other. So this is run and then its output is stored and then that file is given. That is not the case. 
So this is run asynchronously. So this is started and then uh, exactly at that same time, this cat command is called. So how it works is this is actually not a real file. This is something called a FIFO or a uh, last in a fast, first in first out or a named file. So how that works is basically it will wait for uh, input and as long as that FIFO file is open, it will uh, wait and when you give uh, write, write something to that FIFO file, then it will print that. So uh, if this is confusing, let me actually explain how FIFO works. So that although might not be directly present in the syllabus, but let's uh, take a few minutes to go over it. So for example, in this, my current folder, which is a random folder, I don't have any files, right? So LS gives me empty. Here I can create a, a FIFO file by using mkfifo command. So let me uh, name that file as a, uh, let's say name file. Right, so now, as you can see, if I do LS, you can see we have a name five point two three file. And in the permissions, you can see it is not D or it is not F, uh, or like it's not a, a hyphen or it is not D. It is a pipe symbol. So this is a special kind of file, which is a named pipe. So here, if I do cat named pipe, you can see my cursor is stuck, right? So this is not printing anything, but it is also not uh, like giving me the prompt back. So usually cat does not work this way. Either it will print nothing if the file is empty, or it will uh, print whatever is there, and then it will stop. So it is never hung like this. So the reason this is hung is because this is a named pipe. And uh, named pipe neither says that I am empty, nor it will have some value at the start. So cat is, because cat knows this is a named pipe, cat is now waiting for anything to be given to this named pipe file. So for example, if I now open another pane here, so uh, this is still running. Uh, I don't know why this is happening to this okay. Yeah. So let me run it again. So this cat is still running. It's still waiting for some input. And here, so here we are in the same folder. So I have that name pipe. So here, if I echo something, so if I echo, let's say, hello, into the name pipe, so you can see this is still waiting, and it's not printing anything. And as soon as I uh, put something here, you can see now it printed hello, and then it stopped. Right. So this way we can uh, keep a named pipe, which will uh, wait, wait for something to be put in that file. And when some a command is printing something to that file, then that will be taken. So it waits. Similarly, if you are, let's say in this case, if I am again piping something, so I am piping one, two, three. So in this case, notice that we are no longer running the cat command. So here the cat has finished. So no one is listening to this pipe. Right. So now if I run this, now you can see my echo is hung. Right. So the echo is not proceeding. So although it's a very simple command, right? So I have just told echo something, redirect that to this name pipe. But because no one is listening, there is no way for this to go. So remember, name pipes are not uh, like it is it is a file, but it does not store anything in it. So although it acts as if the data is stored inside it, it actually never stores anything in the file system. So when I type this hello, this is not stored in your disk at all. So this actually is basically like a pipe. So only when both ends of the pipes are open can water flow. So right now I'm trying to put something in the pipe and I'm waiting. So this has still not succeeded because I, uh, as long as no one is opening the other side of the pipe, this cannot go through. So here, if I now again run the cat command, so now you can see it printed hello123 and this echo finished running. So this is how a FIFO or a named pipe works. So both ends have to be open. So someone has to write something and someone has to read something. If someone tries to do one without the other happening, it will basically wait. So again, you can see if I just try to print what is inside that file, it will keep on waiting as long as I don't send something through the pipe. So you know, if I send 456, now it printed 456 and it stopped. And similarly, if I try to send something like 789, it will not go unless someone is actually listening. So when I'm listening, then it will print and this will stop. Oh, your voice is breaking a bit. I didn't get that. Can you repeat? If will it print out? Can you repeat that? If you have multiple echo commands, yeah. uh, what will happen? OK, yeah, so yeah. If yeah, you have multiple echo commands. So uh, if you have it like one after the other, then it will behave as if you're running it separately. So for example, let me 
uh, have here echo one and then let me have echo two right so we are giving it both to the name type and here if i have this cat named 5123 so it's listening and if i send this you can see it is uh, printing both one and two right because i did it simultaneously so i did one after the other so the one went into the name pipe and the two went into the name pipe and none of these uh, were hand so as soon as i wrote them it went and the cat printed them similarly if i do it in the reverse order also if i try to send them first of all they're not going <clears throat> but now if i start listening so in this case it will only print one so why is this the case so in the previous case we started listening first and then we sent both of them but in now what we have done is we sent like we started sending first and then we listen so if we have started sending first then uh, this is has already opened the name pipe and it has put the one so it is trying to put the one there but it is not able to unless we start listening so when the cat starts listening it finds the one at that time and then nothing more so it stops printing because we have the echo one and after that we have the echo two so now you can see the uh, terminal is still not free because the echo one has succeeded but the echo two has still not succeeded right so it's still waiting there if i run it again then we get the two so uh, i'm not very familiar like uh, why this difference is there in the ordering so you can see if i run this first we get one and two whereas if i run like the listening part first and then i send then we get one and two together so that i'm not totally sure why that's the case but to ensure that all of this goes always together what you can do is you can do uh, echo one and then echo two and you can put this entire thing inside a curly brace and the output of like whatever is printed by both of these you can directly pipe into the name pipe so if you do this so uh why is this uh, okay i think this is not the correct way one second we can also use a round bracket i believe yeah so you can see now this is waiting and now if i listen to this i'm getting one two and similarly if i'm listening to this first and i'm sending this Either way, we are getting one two. So uh, to be safe, if you are sending multiple things to a name pipe, you should uh, always like enclose it either in round bracket or curly braces, so that the entire thing is sent uh, to the name pipe, and you are not doing it one by one. If you are doing it uh, this way, then sometimes it may only get one of them and not the other. And uh, why do you escape the cat? Uh, oh, so cat that one? is oh, simply because I have uh, <laughs> like my cat is not cat. My cat is bat. So if I just use uh, this oh, one, okay. so this will also give you the same output. But this basically has some fancy things. So it will show you the name of the file and the line numbers. So by default, if you're so running cat, cat, yeah, it's bat cat. But by default, if you're running cat, it should show you like this. So I'm just using this which uh, even if you have a alias it will run the actual command instead of that Got it. so this is basically called a uh, fifo or a named pipe so it has also been explained in here so this is basically the process is run asynchronously and it's uh, input or output is put in that file so it's actually not put there but you can think of it like a pipe so only if someone is listening it goes through and it also goes through line by line so basically uh, as we saw in this we were printing two things so if we are listening and we have two commands that are sending so this command will uh, execute and it will stop and then this command will execute and then it will stop so the first line will go and then it will uh, print so to make it obvious let me put a sleep in between so if i put let's say a sleep of one second and uh, when i press enter just notice the left side so you can see uh, it is okay okay i thought it will print one and then sleep and then print two. So let me try again. Okay, yeah. You can see it is first printing one and then it is printing. So let me add a longer sleep. You can see if we are listening here and I have echo one, then sleep two seconds and then echo two and I press enter. So you can see one is printed, then after two seconds, two is printed. Right, so this uh, reads line by line. So if you're sending one line and uh, through the pipe and someone is listening, so that one line will be gone through and the command will get that one line and it will also print it if it's printing. 
and then uh, if you are let's say doing some things which is taking some time so the pipe will be open so this command will also be hung this command will also be hung and then if you send let's say another line then again this line will be received so the connection remains open as long as uh, you are sending something only when you have finished sending everything the connection closes right so you can send multiple lines and it goes uh, line by line so it is also mentioned here that it is stored in the slash dev slash fd the process association is supported on systems that support named pipes right so fifo and uh, when available processing is performed simultaneously while uh, parameter and variable expression command substitution and uh, arithmetic expansion so everything is done by batch uh, simultaneously so uh, one command is not waiting for the other command to run both of them are run simultaneously and only if there is a delay in the uh, pipe while sending data it will wait for something to come through pipe but both of them are running simultaneously so an example is given here sec 25 will basically print five uh, four lines from 2 to 5 and sec 13 will obviously print 1 2 3 sec 25 will print 2 3 4 5 so if you want to find the difference between output of two commands one way is you can do uh, sec 25 you can see this is the output and sec 13 so what you can do is you can store this in a file let's say sec 25 and you can store this into a file uh, sec 13 so these are just normal files if you see these are normal uh, regular files and now if i uh, do a diff on these two so if i do diff uh, sec13 and sec25 so then i can see what is the difference between the two outputs so obviously two and three are same and there is one in the uh, one three file and there is four and five in the uh, two five five so you can see the difference also there is one in the left side and four and five in the right side but if I don't want to create these temporary files, so let me remove these sec13 and let me remove sec25. One way is we can uh, manually create a named pipe. So if we want to do it ourselves, so we can do uh, mkv4 and I can <coughs> store, uh, like let, let me call it sec13. Similarly, let me create another mkv4, call it sec25. So now you can see we have the named pipes. So I have set one three and set two, uh, two five. So now what I can do is I can do set one three and store it in the set one three named pipe. Now you can see this is not finishing, right? So this is not a file. So I cannot just store the output in the file and stop executing. I have to wait for someone to read that. So let me just create another terminal here. So this is still waiting. And here I will do sec25 and store it in the sec25 uh, name pipe as well. So this is also waiting. So these are storing two things in two pipes, but no one is listening. So now we will do the listening part. So I will do what is the difference between sec13 and sec25. So these are the named pipes. So now if I do this, then you can see both of these stop because they have been able to send things because finally diff was listening to them. So diff then got. And output is obviously the same. So sec13 has one, whereas sec25 has four and five. And others are common. And these have also finished. But instead of ourselves handling the uh, like uh, FIFO files and all, so we don't need to do all this. So I can remove this. Uh, so I can remove all of these. And if we don't need any files at all, then what we can do is we can directly use the bash syntax where I can do sec13. So this is the command that I want to run and set to five and basically batch will do whatever we did with this now so it will first do mkv4 and a file in dev md some file random file and this will also create our mkv4 in the dev md with some number and those two files paths will be returned to diff so diff will basically be running on diff slash dev slash uh md slash some number and slash dev slash every slash some number so this will be reading from the FIFO files and the two sets will be uh basically writing to the FIFO file and because they are working simultaneously uh, it will uh, finish uh, at the same time so now you can see we get the same output without having to create any file so there is no file in my uh, current directory and even the files that were created by uh, this bash that also are automatically deleted after the command has stopped running so in this also you can basically do echo and see so this will create a 63 and a 62 but if you try to cat these out this will no longer exist so as soon as the execution has finished 
uh, the files are automatically deleted. So this is a very nifty way of uh, basically uh, running a command and using its output as a file. So all the process of creating a named pipe file and giving its path is done by Bash itself. So, sir, uh, one, yeah. uh, sir, one doubt, general doubt that there is like this: uh, the result of this diff command, uh, hmm. uh, what, what does it indicate? Like one d zero three a three four. Like uh, yes, so these are the differences. Yes, so the diff command, uh, diff is basically difference between two files. So D yeah. means there is one line which is being deleted. So one means the, the line number in the left file, and zero means the line number on the right file. So in the left file, which is sec one, two, th one, three. So let me just also show the output of those. So if you run sec one, three, you will get one, two, three. And if you run sec two, five, you will get two, three, four, five. So what it is uh, telling is the line, which is line number one on the left file, is uh, deleted. Uh, so it is not there. So obviously, if it's deleted, uh, line number of the second file does not make sense. So what it is telling is this line, which is line number one of the left file, is not there in the second file. So it is dropped. So that is what D means. And similarly, A means something is appended. So it is telling that in the third line of the uh, like this left file, so after 3, and on the right file, it is 3 and 4. So the third and fourth line. So this is the third line, and this is the fourth line. So it's telling the third and fourth line of the uh, right file, they are appended in the left file after the line 3. So the A means appended, and the lines are 4 and 5. Similarly, we also have uh, a chain. So if let's say I have a file, let me create two files. File one, where I say hello, and file two, where I say uh, capital hello, let's say. So if I do diff file one and file two, so here you can see we have C. So not D or A, but C. So C means that line one of left file and line one of the right file, there is a change between these. So no extra line is added or uh, some line is deleted, but the same line is hello on the left side and hello on the right side. So here you can see it is telling that there is some line on the le left file, which is not there on the right file. So we just say left angle bracket. So the left file has the uh, line which has one in it. And in the right side, it's not there. Similarly, we say that uh, after the third line on the left file, the right file also has uh, two lines, which is four and five. So we just have the right angle brackets here. Whereas when we have C, which means the lines differ. So both uh, in the both sides we have the line, but there is some difference. So then we see both the left and the right. So we show what are the two uh, like lines. So in the file one we have lowercase hello, in the file two we have uppercase hello. So that is how the diff output works. So this is the default output. You also can show all the lines uh, to the screen. So for example. Uh, if you go to man diff, you can see uh, there are multiple ways of showing things. So, for example, you have minus y, which shows everything in side by side. So, all the lines are shown. So, here instead of this, which shows only the difference, if I use minus y, so it will show you all the difference. So, you can see the uh, two and three are also shown. So, they are white. That means there is no change in them at all. In the first line, we have one here, but we don't have anything. So, it is telling this left arrow means. It is only present on the left file and not in the right file. And similarly, these four and fives are only present in the right file and not in the left file. Similarly, if I do diff y file one and file two, so there you can see we have a bar, which means both the lines are there in both the files, but there is some difference between both. So here uh, we have uh, lowercase h here and we have uppercase h here. Yeah. Okay, sir. Yeah. Thank you. So that is basically the uh, this command. So here we are not even using uh, diff. So the diff is just used to show you how this works. But the question is, what does the command echo sec 10 output represent? So uh, that whatever command we are running, uh, what is returned by this syntax is just the path to that uh, FIFO file. Right? So when we are printing the path to that FIFO file, we simply just print that path. We don't cat. So if this was cat, then it will be output of this command. So it's, the answer will be the standard output from the command if this was cat. But because this is echo, we are simply printing that path. So the output is a file. So this simply prints the path of a file and not the contents of that file or not the output of this command. Okay, so that's why the first question answer is a file. So we have uh, other options, directory, and nothing is printed.
what I wanted to know is uh, say the example is given such that uh, is it uh, like from this example can we derive that the echo command the sec command which is inside uh, the parenthesis is uh, outputting a file no the sec command is not outputting a file right that is the whole point that we are discussing so the sec command will simply print 10 lines from 1 to 10 this syntax of executing the sec command will give you the uh, path of the file so that is yeah, what a, is given here yeah yeah it's a temporary file right uh, yes, so yes. But uh, can we like I'm just uh, putting myself in someone who gave this paper in 2023. Say mm -hmm. this was the first paper they uh, first paper of system commands. Maybe uh, just assuming. Uh, so in the course there was nothing uh, related to this, right? And if uh, they did not see any examples as such while the course was happening, how would someone figure it out that maybe this uh, the this syntax was exactly actually a, a temporary file? Yes, so multiple ways. First of all, like this was discussed in a few live sessions this time. I'm not sure if it was or was not discussed in that term's live session. And secondly, like uh, it is uh, explained in this block, right? So if you go through this, this properly lists out that this will create a temporary file in slash dev slash fd. And uh, what you get back from this is the path of that. So uh, if you're going through this and you also go through the uh, examples, it should be fairly obvious. So here you can see they're using diff. So diff only takes files. So this will obviously be a file, which is also mentioned in the extract of the man page above. And right. then instead of diff, what we're doing is we're using echo. So if it is a cat, then cat, a file will okay. print that file. But wow. echo something will simply print what was given. So whether it's a path or some random string, whatever you give to echo, it will be printed. So here in this case, basically, whatever this thing returns will be printed. So hopefully, after going through this and the examples, it, uh, hopefully that is clear. If not, then uh, then it will be an issue. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you, uh, while I was giving my quiz papers, sometimes there were a couple of questions like this uh, where you had to, like, there were obviously the man pages given, but hmm. uh, uh, since I was like starting with system commands, uh, yeah. the syntax in the man pages are not often clear. Like uh, they are, they say that uh, this command does this work, but how do you exactly use that command? Sometimes it's straightforward, like a hyphen and a, a hyphen u or something like that. But sometimes there are brackets. Sometimes there are uh, yeah. double um, um, double uh, minus signs. So that yeah. makes it a bit challenging. So. Yeah, so something like this, right? So brackets and dots. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So basically, what these means is, if something is inside square brackets, that means it is optional. So you can either give it or you can not give it also. If you give it also, it is fine. If you not give it also, that will also run the command. So usually, all options will be given like this, optional. So you can give some option like this. So the options are listed below. You may not give them also. And dot, dot, dot simply means you can give more than one of this. So you can give one option, obviously, but you can also give two, three, four options, as many options as you want. So that is what dot, dot, dot means. So a, uh, dot, dot, dot after something means that that thing, which is uh, followed by dot, 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 can be present more than once. And square bracket means it may be present or may not be present. Whereas just this file, right? so there is no square bracket, there is no dot, 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 means files has to be there. So diff will take two files. But uh, it may or may not take options. So another example would be the grep command. So here you can see that we in grep we can give multiple options. So options dot dot dot. It may or may not be present. And if it is present, there can be multiple. Then we can we have to give a pattern. So there is no square bracket in this. This is mandatory. But the file can be again optional. So you can see the square bracket in the file. So we can give a file. And if we don't give a file, then it will read from the standard in. Right. So it is also mentioned here. If no file is given, uh, recursive search is examined the working directory. So this is for the recursive search. And then, uh, if you don't give normally, then it will read from the standard in. So in this uh, case, you can see that there is also dot, dot, dot in the file as well. So in grep, you can give multiple files as well, and, or you can give no files at all. And it'll, uh, if you don't give any files, it will read from the standard in. So like once you're familiar with this syntax of the synopsis, then uh, going through the main pages become easy. So then you can just see what each option means. So you can just go through, OK, this option does this, this option does this. But how to run the command, that is explained basically in the synopsis.
So these are optional and these are more than once. And this is uh, mandatory and present only once. And here you can see that minus E patterns dot dot dot. So this basically means that you can here you're giving only one pattern. Whereas if you're giving minus E, then you can give multiple patterns, right? So dot dot dot, you can give more than one pattern. Similarly, okay. for minus F, yeah. Uh, okay. Sir, science, sir, can you repeat this one, uh, the optional one and mandatory one? Uh, sorry. Yeah, so if you have a square bracket, that means whatever is inside that is optional. You may or may not provide that. But if you don't have square brackets, that is mandatory. So square bracket is optional. Yeah. So in this case, file is optional, right? In grep, you can give a file, you cannot give a file also. Whereas pattern always has to be present, so it is mandatory. Similarly, options are also optional. Okay. Yeah. And dot 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 means you can give more than one, so you can give multiple options to grab. Similarly, you can give multiple files to grab. Okay. Right. Yeah. So uh, in this one, we basically so the third option is obviously not, never correct, so it is never a directory. And uh, so the confusion will basically lie between option A and B. So uh, you may think the C print the uh, standard output of the command set 10, which would have been true if this was a cat command. So if we were printing that temporary file, but because we are only printing the paths using echo, that's why the answer is uh, simply a file. But it is uh, set 10 uh, is not a path, right, sir? It is. It will be like, you know, show one to 10 line numbers, right? Yes, so but this syntax it will store the output command. in a file. Yeah. It should print all 1 to 10, right? No, so that is what we have been discussing for so long, right? So if you use this uh, angle bracket syntax, so if I do this set 10, this will only print the file where the output of this set 10 is stored. So if you do it using dollar, then it will print the output, what is stored. But we are not using a dollar here, right? Here the question uses left angle bracket, which is also explained here. If you're using that left angle bracket, then it will store that output in a file and give you the path. So if you're just printing the path, you just get the path. Whereas if you are uh, printing the contents of that file in that path, then you will get the actual output. Okay. It's so I'm one help needed. Sorry that you know I'm interrupting here. Uh, <clears throat> okay. I have my OPP scheduled actually tomorrow evening. That was the situation till uh, this morning. And now when I checked my schedule, it is it is moved to morning slot. It is it was earlier 4, 4, 4 p.m. slot. Now it changed to 10 a.m. So I'm just wondering um, how I can take this forward. So in the like portal itself, it yeah. changed. In okay. the no, in the portal it did not change, sir. Uh, they just you know sent out an email now saying that you know uh, this uh, thing has been changed and this is the proctor uh, time. Okay, okay, okay. So I think that is handled by the ops team. So like uh, the scheduling of OPP and the like mapping of mentor uh, proctors and all that is handled by the ops team. So you can send a mail to support like support at study dot uh, .in. Uh, mm -hmm. So they should be able to handle that. So this is not handled by the course team. So like mapping of OPP that is handled directly by the ops team. Okay, so because till till now I was planning that I have exam tomorrow evening, so I can sit and mm -hmm. do something. Still, I'm in office, so I thought I can attend this this yeah, yeah. session for some time. Okay, sir, I'll drop off then. I will focus on that mail and tomorrow's OP. This is for uh, what is that we are going to cover now, sir, in the session? Oh, so we are doing PYQs of end term. Oh, all right. Okay. Anyway, it's recorded, right? I will yes. I will take this at a later point. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You, sure. Thank you so yeah. much. So uh, let's move on to the next question. So in this question, we are asking uh, which of the following commands uh, replaces only the second occurrence of pattern Alice with rabbit in each line of the file. So this is a pretty straightforward question. So this asks second occurrence and uh, second occurrence of each line and not the second line itself. So we know instead we can uh, like give a number after the search and the replace part. And that number means that uh, occurrence in each line will be searched and replaced. So if we have only one Alice, nothing will be changed. If we have three Alice's, then the middle Alice will change to rabbit. Okay, so just let me know if this is clear or you want me to explain this, why this is the correct option. 
So this will do it only for the second line, whereas we want to do for all lines the second operand. So, uh, Shan, if uh, in the second line it doesn't have alias, it won't replace. No. So if uh, no, uh, not the second line. If in any line we don't have two alias. So, for example, uh, let's say I have alias dot Here I have one alias. Here I have uh, two alices, and here I have uh, three alices. Right. So if I now run this, substitute uh, Alice with rabbit only for the second occurrence, and I do it on Alice.txt, then you can see the first line, if there is only one Alice, then nothing is happening. In the second line, because we have two, then the second one is changed. And in the third line, only the second one is changed. The first and third one is not changed. Yeah, my actually, my exact doubt was uh, if there are multiple lines, um, uh, with different con uh, different contents, but uh, I just want to replace the exact the second occurrence of Alice uh, start after the first occurrence of Alice. So if I, I'm not clear, uh, what I wanted to uh, check is if the in the first line if there was Alice, two, it occurred say maybe two times or one time doesn't matter. Hmm. Whatever the next occurrence of Alice is, I want to change just that one. Okay, so you want to do it line by line, right? So yeah, line uh, line. if in the first line Alice is there, then the second line, basically the second line where Alice is there, you want to replace that. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, so for what, what that, you will have to use like a while loop, right? So using bash basically, or you can also do it in awk. So you have to basically use some programming concepts, right? So you have to maybe okay. store some variable where you store the state. So first time you, uh, so at the start, we'll have a basically a Boolean variable, which will be false or something or zero. And when you uh, anchor Alice for the first time, and that is zero, that time you simply store it to be one. And the next time when you anchor Alice and that value is one, then you make the substitution. So something. Oh, like okay. 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 Got it. Got it. So instead, we can either say which line to substitute, or we can say like which occurrence of that line to substitute. Or we can also do both, right? I can say do only second substitution only in the second line. So that will also happen. You can see in the third line, it's not a. But we cannot uh, tell like that in set itself. OK, OK, got it, got it. So in this, we are only asking like second occurrence of all line uh, in each line. So that's why this is the correct option. Let's move on. So, so this is the next question. Following entry is made to a cron tab to run a script that will perform the backup. When is the script, which is basically mentioned here, scheduled to be executed? So here you basically have to know how cron works. But even if you don't know, the hint is given, right? So you can see what each number represents. So the first number is the minute. The second number is the hour. Third number is which day of the month. Fourth number is the month. And the fifth number is which, uh, which week. So sun, uh, like which day of the week, like Sunday, Monday, etc. And last one is obviously the command. So we are running this command at 5, 2, star, star, 0. And whenever you have a star, that means uh, for all the values. So ignore basically that field. So we only see 5, 2, which is uh, the uh, hour 2 and minute 5. So this is uh, in the night 2, 5. So 0, 2, colon, 0, 5. And the last one is 0. So that is the day of the week. So that is basically Sunday. So 0 is a Sunday. So it will run on each Sunday at 0, 2, colon, 0, 5. AM basically. So in the night at 2 5 AM on every Sunday. So not on any other day. So only on Sunday. So it will run weekly. So that is the option. So you can see every Sunday. So here, uh, although you may be confused, what does zero mean? Whether zero is Sunday or Monday. So fortunately, all options are Sunday. So you won't be confused which one to choose. But the difference is in the time. So you can see 0, 2, 0, 5, uh, 0, 5, 0, 2, 0, 5, 0, 3, and 0, 2, 0, 3. So there is uh, no mention of 3 here, so it can never be 3. So the confusion will be between 0205 and 0502. So here you can see that the first one is minute and the second one is hour. So this is 0205 and not 0502. So hopefully this one makes sense. Okay, so if this is clear, then let's move on. So in this question, we have, uh, I think this is one of the questions we had in the quiz this term, right? So you have a file and 
you use basically the capital N to read the next line into the pattern space. And then you substitute the N, like the backslash N, which is the uh, line feed character with a space. So if you do it like this, so if you sub uh, read for every line, you read the next line. So in line one, we will read line two. And I'm substituting the backslash N between line one and line two to be a space. So I get line one space line two. Then because we have already processed line one and line two, the next cycle of set starts with line three. So we do the same thing for all the lines. So we get something like this, line one, line two, then line three, line four, line five, line six, etc. Similarly, if you do it with two ends, so in each line, if you're reading two lines into the uh, pattern space, so in line one, I'm reading line two and line three into the pattern space. But then I'm substituting only the first backslash and two space. And so notice that there is no G in here. So we are not doing it for all the backslash and in that time, only the first backslash and. So in this uh, pattern space, basically, we have line one, backslash and line two, backslash and line three. And we are substituting only the first backslash and with space. So we get line one, space, line two, backslash and line three. Right. So the output is something like this, line one, line two, line three. But because we have also read this line three in the pattern space, even though we have not replaced the backslash and before it to make it in a single line, but we still have read it in the pattern space. So when the next cycle of said runs, it will start from line four itself. So then again, we will do the same thing. So line four and line five will be on the same line. Line six will be in the next line. So we get a pattern like this, line one, line two, then line three in the next line, then line four, line five, line six on the next line. So this way we have the output. And the question is basically, which command do we want to use if you want to merge every fourth and fifth line? So we want one and two to be side by side, and then three and four to be as it is. So here you can see here, one and two is side by side, and then three is again side by side four, when we had one n. And when we had two n, one and two is side by side, three is as it is, but then four and five are side by side. And what you want is one and two side by side, three and four to be as it is, and then five and six to be side by side. So obviously you follow the progression or natural progression. So you have one N which does this, two N will do this, three N will obviously do one, two, and then three and four will be as it is, and then five, six. So that is because if we have three Ns, so you are reading three lines into the pattern space. So in line one, you will read line two, line three, and line four into pattern space. And you substitute only the first new line with space. So it will be line one, line two, Three and four will be as it is. And in the next iteration, we directly start with five. So then five, six will be side by side. So in this case, we have to use three capital N's. But in the examples, we are substituting the new lines with spaces. But remember that this, this file is a tab separated data file, right? So this is a tab separated values file. So instead of space, we should uh, basically replace the new line with tabs. So that is the option given here. So we have four options. Uh, all of these, uh, so three, uh, two of these have three ends and two of these has four ends. So we saw that four ends is not the correct. So two, three ends is correct. And out of these, first one substitutes backslash n with a space, whereas the second one substitutes backslash n with a tab. So this one is correct because this is a uh, tab separated data file. So this is the same question that we got in quiz two, this term. Just let me know if this one is clear. Okay. okay. So let's move forward. So now we have this next question. A file contains data collected starting from 4th April 20, uh, 2004. The data is collected on 4th, uh, 14th and 24th April, May and June since then. So 4th of April, 14th of April, 24th of April. 4th of May, 14th of May, 24th of May, and 4th of June, 14th of June, 24th of June. The text file, however, does not contain the date information. Now it is necessary to add a column to this file which uh, with the date format like this. So first line will be like this, 4 April 2024, sorry, 2004. Next line will be 14 April 2004. Third line will be 24 April 2004, etc. Identify which of the following command using brace expansion will create a column to an empty file with the desired format uh, from 4th April to 24th December 2010. And so uh, 
it is sorted as per the year. So it will be 2004 first and then 2005, then 2006, etc. So we also have given some few hints. So you can see if I do echo 1 dot dot 4 and b dot dot d. So we have also seen this is basically race expansion. So if I do echo 1 dot dot 4, this will simply expand it into 1, 2, 3, 4. So this becomes echo 1, space 2, space 3, space 4. So we get these four uh, numbers. But if I put something beside it, so if I do b dot dot b, then you can see it basically does a commutation uh, of it. Uh, sorry, not permutation, but uh, combination. So 1, 2, 4 is expanded into 1, 2, 3, 4, and B, D is expanded into B, C, D. And because they are together, all the combinations of them are taken. So 1, B, 1, C, 1, D, then 2, B, 2, C, 2, D, 3, D, 3, C, 3, D, and 4, B, 4, C, 4, D. Right? But if here, if I have a space between them, then these two are not linked. So now this is one expansion, and this is one expansion. So they will basically expand independently. This will expand to 1, 2, 3, 4. This will expand to B, C, D. So our output will be 1, 2, 3, 4, B, C, D. So only if it is together will they combine together and you they'll give you this output. But uh, what if, let's say, you want there to be a space. So instead of 1, B, you want 1 space, B. Then you want 1 space, C. So output you want in the same combination, but you want a space. So in that case, you can give a space by escaping them. So you can give a escape, uh, space, but you have to escape that space. If I escape that space, now you can see I have the uh, correct things. So I have 1B, 1C, 1D, 2B, 2C, 2D, 3B, 3C, 3D, 4B, 4C, 4D. So I have the correct combination, and I also have a space between them. So can so we here, give a space within the curly bracket, three curly brackets? Instead of backslash, we get a Curly bracket, space, curly bracket. Okay, let's see that. Sorry. So, like this, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, if you run this, then basically this is taken as like these two are taken literally. So, this oh, becomes uh, one curly bracket open, two curly bracket open, three curly bracket open, four curly bracket open. And then this becomes curly bracket close B, curly bracket close C. Okay. So, this, we are in yeah, yeah it, it doesn't work this. Uh, like, if only if you don't have space in between, it will expand. So here, if you have something like uh, x dot dot z, then it will expand. So oh, it will okay. expand with all of these together. But if you want a space in between, you have to like escape these space. Right. So in the example also, you can see if we have a quotation here. So obviously, uh, like sorry, not a quotation. If you have a semicolon, so obviously a semicolon in bash literally means like end of the command and start of the new command. So we cannot directly put a semicolon. That will uh, think that the first command is this echo one two three four and then b c and d are the commands so that will give you error that command b is not found but if i want uh, the semicolon like semicolon symbol then i can code that so now you can see we have uh, one semicolon b one semicolon c etc so similarly if i put a space also in here we can see the same output then you can either code the space or you can escape the space both of these are valid so here you can see that uh, echo 1020 gives you 1020. And echo 1020, where you transpose the, sorry, not the transpose, if you translate the space to be a new line, then you get 10 and 20 on separate lines. So now these are the options. So there are four options. And they're pretty same, but then there is some differences between them. So let's go through them. So we have echo April, May, June. So these are the three months that you have to uh, print so April, May, and June. So we are echoing April, May, June, then a semicolon, and then 4 to 30, and skipping 10 lines, uh, skipping 10 numbers. So in this uh, brace expansion syntax, if you just give the starting and ending point, it will increment by 1. So 1 dot dot 10 will increment by 1. But if I give again a dot dot and 2, then it will increment by 2. So this will become 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Similarly, if I give 3, it will become 1, 4, 7, 10. Right? So this way, we can give our increment. So for example, here, if I give uh, 4 and then 4 to 30 with an increment of 10, then we basically get 4, 14, and 24. So these are the days on which the data was collected, if you remember. So here, the 10, when you give 3, 10 got printed, but 2, 10 did not get printed. I mean, just uh, no, 10, list. in this, 10 will not get printed, right? Because oh, okay, the, okay, 14 now. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So 
the left bound is 4, the right bound is 30. Oh, yeah, yeah, got it, got it. So after 24, we really get 34. Correct. So uh, if this was like 0, then we will get 0, 10, 20, 30. So if it fits in that step, then it will print. Because this is not always exclusive. This is inclusive. Right. But in this, it is not fitting. So we are excluding that. So here we are getting 4, 14, 24. And here we are getting April, May, June. And when we expand them, we will obviously get uh, all the combinations. And then we also have 2020, uh, 2004 to 2010. So if we basically combine all this, if I say echo April, comma May, comma June, and then I have a semicolon, and then I give uh, 4 to 30 with a step of 10, and then I have a comma, and then I give 2004 to 2010. So this is the range. So you get all of these combinations. So you get April 4, 2004, April 4, 2005, April 4, 2006. Right. So this is uh, not the order we want it in. We want it in the order, uh, all the dates of 2004, then all the dates of 2005, then all the dates of 2006. It's right. so although the like format is uh, correct, like we have month and then date, then year, but uh, the ordering of the output is not correct. So that's why we then have a few other things that we are doing. So then we are substituting the space uh, to be a uh, new line. So in echo, obviously, the first and the second thing is separated by a space. So here, if I do a TR of space with a new line, then each entry gets its own line. Right? So we get like this. So each entry gets its own line. So we have April, uh, all the April 4s of all the years, then all the April 14s of all the years, and then all the April 24s of all the years. So that is not the correct uh, way to do it. So then after putting each entry in a new line, we are also substituting the comma to be a space. So it is important we do uh, this second substitution after the first substitution, because if we first substitute all the commas with space, then we substitute all the space with new line, then basically all the commas will also become new line. So first, with, first we substitute all the space to be new line, and then we substitute all the commas to be space. So we are having the June 14 and then the 2008 on separate words. So this is one word and this is another word. So then what we are doing is we are sorting minus s. So what is the minus s flag of sort? If we go down here, you can see minus s is a stable sort. So stable stability of a sort is basically uh, like DSA concept. So if you have a sort which, uh, let's say you're sorting on two objects. And so the it's not two numbers, but then two objects. So let's say you're saying that out of uh, in like in the object, the object might have multiple attributes, but I'm sorting based on only the age. So if you're sorting, let's say two person based on their age, and if they are having the same age, then according to your sorting algorithms, the two people are same. But obviously the two person is obviously not same. So they are different person. So uh, the order in which you put them, if you are only like, uh, stating that I only sort by their age, then you can put in them in any either the order. So you can either put person A after person B, or you can put person uh, B after person A. So let me just draw it here. So let's say you have two person A and B, and uh, they have a lot of attributes. Right? Each person has like their name, uh, gender, everything. But let's say one of the attributes is age, and this is also 22. This guy is also 22. So if you're sorting just by age, you can put them in the order A, B, or you can put them in the order B, A. But uh, let's say your requirement is uh, sort them by age. But if the age is same, then keep them in the same order in which the array originally was. Right? So for example, you have A, and then let's say C, D. These are different people, E, and then B. So in this case, obviously, C, D, and E may go bad, so like different places if their age is different. So like maybe like this is 19. This is 60, this is 70. So obviously, it will be C and then D and E. But in between, we will have A and B. So in this case, if I ask the order to be same as the input order, then this should always be AB, and this should never be BA. So this a concept of uh, like keeping objects with same uh, like search uh, quantity in the same order as they appeared in the input, this is called the stability. 
So if a search is a stable search, only then this will be guaranteed. If a search is not a stable search, this may or may not be guaranteed. So in uh, sort, you have the option to use the minus s, which will sort it in a stable manner. So that this will basically do something internally so that your sort is stabilized. So even after sorting, you know that they are sorted by age, but things which was uh, earlier in some order, that order is maintained if two people have the same age. So let's see what we are doing in this command after this. Basically, all the in-place sorting, like uh, yes, not, not sort, but insertion sort, for example. Right? Yeah. So we can see which sorting as uh, which sorts are stable. I think there are two uh, that we learned: merge, uh, bubble, merge, insert, and uh, quick. Two are yeah. stable and two are unstable. Yeah. So bubble insertion, counting, tim sort, and merge sort. These will be stable. Right. But a uh, quick sort will be uh, unstable and heap because sort Because you are also. changing the pivot and you're swapping positions. It's pretty yes. intuitive. Yes. yes. Quick yes. sort will not work, right? Because you're pivoting yes. and you're swapping. Yes. Yeah. So in, uh, usually this is useful when you want to sort by multiple things. Like if you want to, let's say, sort by the uh, age of each person. And if they have same age, then let's say you want to sort by their name. Right. Okay. So they will obviously have their names. And this guy will have a name and this guy will have a name. So if I want to do this, what will be the procedure? Like, let's say I cannot uh, change the sorting algorithm. So it will only sort by one key at a time. So like example, uh, you're using uh, uh, Python sorting. So there you just want to mention the key with which it is sorted. You don't want to change the sorting algorithm totally. So how can we do that? So how can I make sure that the, each people are sorted by their age, but then if they have same age, they're sorted by their name. So do sort sort by you have to give like uh, primary key k1 comma k2 right? Uh, so in places where you can mention multiple keys, that is fine. But uh, in some places you can only mention one key. Right? So, so in that the composite, you can concatenate and give a composite key. Yeah, that is fine. But in some cases you cannot also change the attributes, right? So in such a case, what you should do is we you should use a stable sort. So okay. I'm just calling it s sort for example. And first, you have to uh, sort that by the second attribute, so which should be a tiebreaker. So I will sort like all the arrays. So let's just call this an array of people. And the key should be their name. So first, I will sort the people by their name. And this actually can be a normal sort also. This can be a stable sort also. Then I should do a stable sort. And I should then sort uh, the people by their age. So. Hopefully this is clear now. So once I have sorted them by their name, they are in the ascending order of their name. Now, if I do a stable sort on their age, so like they will be sorted by their age, but if there are people who have same age, then they will uh, keep the order in which they came. And the order in which they came is basically the order of the last sorting, which is the sort by name. So if you want to do like multiple sorting, you should first sort by the second thing and then sort by the first thing and that should be a stable sort it's i think that is what they're trying to accomplish here although they have only sorted once so uh, i just explained why the stable sorting is uh, required in some cases so let's see what this is doing so first we are putting every element in their own line then we are substituting the commas with the space so then we are using a sort in which we have given the key to be the second field. So we have two fields. So if you don't give the minus p flag to sort to mention what is the delimiter, by default, it will take the white space to be delimited. So I am asking it to sort by the second key. So if I uh, just sort this simply without mentioning anything, this will sort by the entire line. So you can see it will first have all the Aprils, then it will have all the uh, Junes, and then it will have the Mays. And after the Aprils, it will basically be sorted by the numbers. So you have uh, April 1, I mean the 14, but the one is compared, then the April 2s and then the April 4s, right? So it's sorted uh, lexiconographically. But here, if I ask it to sort only using the second field, then it will uh, sort it this way. So it will only sort it by the, all the 2004s will be at first, then 2005, then 2006, this way. And if we use a minus S, so that will basically keep the original order of uh, what was the input if uh, two things have the same second field. Right? So you can see this is basically how it will be. 
so all the 2000 like each year will be clubbed together and inside them the order will remain as it was when it was generated so i think the stable and non stable gives you the same output april 14244 4. uh Okay, no, so this is actually required. So you can see uh, the stable will give you the correct output where first four is there, then 14 is there, where, then 24 is there. Whereas if you don't have the stable sorting, then the original order is uh, not present. So you can see now it is April 14, then April uh, 24, then April 4. Right? So this is not the correct order of the dates. So if I don't want sort to change the order of items that have the same value, so here we are sorting only by the second column, which is the year. So if I don't want it to change the order of the lines, if the second value is same, so then we use a stable search here, stable sort here. And here you can see all the 2010s uh, have the internal ordering of each line, same as what was created when this was done. So then we have in this order, April 4, April 14, April 24, May 4, May 14, May 24, June 4, June 14, June 24. So now, what they're doing is they're substituting the space with comma again. So they're translating the space back into comma. So this, the space between the month date and the year. So that again becomes a comma. And then the semicolon is substituted to be a space. So we are doing a lot of PRs basically to make all the substitutions. So now you can see there's a space between the month and the date and there's a comma. So this is the format that was, uh, I think, asked. Okay, maybe the comma is not mentioned here. Okay, so this is uh, one format of mentioning the dates. You can see we have the month, the day, then comma, and then the year. So in this case, we have the correct uh, like ordering. So all the years are together. And inside each year, it is uh, according to the date. So it's April uh, 4, then April 14, then April 24, then May 4, May 14, May 24, and then June 4, June 14, June 24. So that's why this is uh, the correct option. Let us see what is the difference between this and the other options. So the first line is uh, instead of semicolon, you have a comma here. So you're ma making both of these commas. And then you are uh, substituting both the commas with space. So this will be month, space, date, space, year. And then you're sorting by the third key. So let us see what happens when we do that. So instead of semicolon, we have this also as comma and this also as comma. Then we substitute space with new line and comma with space. Then we do a stable sort, not on the second, but the third field. Because now we have two spaces, so the year will be the third field. Then we substitute space with comma. So we don't do the last substitution because we don't have a semicolon. So when we do this, uh, the ordering seems to be the same but here we have commas uh, both before and after the date whereas in the previous command we only have comma after the date so that is the only difference the order of the output will remain the same so in this case uh, the format is different that's why this is not the correct option and this one has the different format that is the correct option so the third option also does something different so here we have a space and we are substituting space with a new line so obviously in this we will have a totally messed up output right because we also have a space after the month so month and date has a space in between and we are substituting that with a new line so we will have month on one line and then date on another line so this will not work at all even the sort will not work correctly because it will so compare a month's value and the other line which is has which has a date and the year so it will also sort them accordingly so this one will not work and the fourth option so here we are putting them side by side so we don't have any uh delimiter between the month and the date so even after sorting we cannot remove so here you can see we're trying to remove the semicolon uh, and make it a space but there is no semicolon so we have not put any delimiter between the month and the date so in that case, uh, it will always be stuck together. So we'll have April 4, and there will be no space between them. So that's why this is also not a correct option. You can see the all the options are basically derived from the first option uh, with uh, like minor mistakes. So in uh, the second one, we have the new line coming between month and the date. The fourth one, we are trying to get a space from the semicolon, but we have forgot to put the semicolon. 
which we have done in the first one. And in the second one, we have put commas in both the places. So we obviously cannot put a space instead of the comma. Because if we put a space, then there will be space uh, in both of these places. And if you don't substitute, then we'll have commas in both these places. So we cannot have something like this, where we have space here and comma here. So that's why this is the correct option. Here. Uh, one just quick uh, uh, thinking. Uh, can we replace uh, TR with grep, uh, search and replace? Uh, grep is go? just for searching. So instead of TR, you can use said for substitution. That's so, OK, so said uh, search and replace. Yeah, yeah, that you can use. So although like if you're using for single character, then TR is like uh, like less characters. And also, it is like faster to implement. Okay. okay. But both okay. will give you the same output. Okay. Just make sure when you're using uh, said, so you have to use the G at the end for global substitution, because TR that is how TR by default works. So if you want the same output as TR, you have to use a global substitution. Okay. So you give uh, said uh, the minus i. Oh, well, I guess it's not a file. No, you said, don't need minus i. Yeah, directly. Uh, said minus e then uh, uh, within single code s slash whatever the pattern divided by then slash the pattern to replace slash g. So yes. Yes. yes, exactly. So this is the uh, this question. So let's move on to this one. So choose the correct said command from the options which will replace all the three character month name with the corresponding numbers. So note only the month should be changed. So we have an associative array where we have all the months we have jan feb march april may june july august september october november december and their values are given 1 to 12 so then we are reading uh, one line from the standard input and then we go over all the months in this dictionary right so we do for m in and then month to number is the name of the array and uh, and then at the rate means all the values and this uh, Exclamation mark means uh, the, I think, the number of uh, arguments, or does it mean the key? Let us see. So let me create a script here. And let us add a, a map here. So I'll just call it MTN. And here we can have MTN equals. And then here we basically give all the different ones. So Jan equals one. And then similarly, till Feb, we have 12. And then if I simply print out the exclamation MTN, so what will this print? It will print out all the keys. So this way, we can get all the keys of the dictionary. And if I then access uh, each key on the dictionary, we get the values. So here, I can basically do for m in this. So if I do echo m, then we get the keys. But if I do the uh, basically this way, so mpn and then square bracket m, then we get the number. So you can see we get uh, each number for each month. So the order of uh, getting uh, like the keys from our associative array is not guaranteed. So it will not be in the same order that you have given because an associative array is not ordered. So although in Python, in the later versions of Python, it is now ordered. But earlier in Python, dictionaries were also not ordered. And similarly, in Bash, associative arrays are also not ordered. So although you have inserted in the correct order, your uh, iteration can be in any order. But you will get all the keys. So then what we're doing is, uh, if the line matches a month, then we uh, proceed. Otherwise, we continue. So if a line does not have a month in it, so this is a regex comparison. So we are checking if uh, that line uh, has uh, like any month, so Jan, Feb, March, etc. So we're checking for each month. So if, uh, let's say, Jan is not there, then we simply continue and go into the next month. So Feb, then we check if Feb is there or if Feb is not there, then again, we continue. And we keep on iterating over the month unless until we find a month, let's say July, which matches this record. So there is a JUL inside this line. 
So then we simply uh, pass the echo dollar line to this said command, which will search for the month and replace it with the value of the number of the month. And so here now, instead of doing this entire while loop, we have to choose one command, like one line command, which can do the same thing uh, instead of this. So this line we have to replace. So in this, you can see we are echoing the line and then we are sending it to set. And in set, we are substituting that month with the uh, like value of that month's number. So here we have four options. So in the first and second option, we have lowercase. So we are substituting the same thing with a lowercase value. So first we are substituting uh, each uh, thing with a lowercase value. And then we are checking again. So we are doing two substitutions in this first one. Second one also, we are uh, substituting it with lowercase value. But here we're doing it only for the month. And in the third and fourth one, we are using we're not doing two set commands. We're using only one set command. In this one, we are using minus i. And in this one, we are using minus n. So here we are asking that uh, choose the correct set command from the options, which will replace all the three character month name with corresponding numbers. Only the month should be changed. So in this case, uh, minus i will not work because we are working on a standard input. So here, this command itself should give an error. So if you are trying to, uh, let's say, do some substitution on, let's say, some standard input, if you do minus i, this itself should give you an error. So if I, let's say, uh, try to do this, so you will get there is no input file. So this option is obviously not correct. So this is not correctly marked. So this is not the correct option, although this is marked this way. Similarly, we have minus n, which will not print anything to the uh, output. So even though the substitution will be successful, it will not be printed. So this is also not correct. So out of the first and the second options, in the first one, we are converting everything into lowercase. So although our keys itself, they have one uppercase letter. So as you can see, the first letter is always uppercase. So this will also not work. So if you are uh, making the entire thing that you are uh, like the entire line if you're substituting it with lowercase then uh, you will never get the match right so even if there was a capital j a n jan after making it into lowercase it will become lowercase j a n so then you can never get the correct substitution so uh, here we are not using case insensitive so this will also not work and finally in the fourth one uh, sorry in the second one what we are doing is we are here also we are substituting uh, the dollar m with the lowercase. So here we are seeing if there is a Jan, then we are substituting it with uh, the lowercase value of that Jan. And again, then we are searching for this. So obviously, this one also will not work because if you are substituting uh, uppercase thing with lowercase, and then if you're searching for that uppercase thing without uh, i here, which means case insensitive, then this will also, this set will also never work. So in this, uh, all the four options are incorrect. So I think this is a wrong question, which is given here. So none of these options should work. Uh, this option looks like the one given in the script itself looks correct enough. So here we are directly working on the std in, and we are substituting the dollar uh, $m with the value. So if you want to do it for all the months, even if it is lowercase, what we can do is we can add a i after this. So this, this will be said s slash dollar $m slash this thing slash i so then uh, even if the string contains a lowercase jan or a lowercase feb etc it will still substitute it to the number so that would be the correct option which i think is not there in the option so this thing has no correct options so just let me know if this one is clear or if there is something that i'm missing so, uh, how do you? Uh, I forgot. How do you do case insensitive, insensitive matching inside? Uh, yes, yeah, so you have to. You have to have a i after this last forward slash. Okay, and uh, what uh, what is the purpose of a hyphen i inside? So which hyphen a... i, uh, which is a flag, that means uh, make the substitution in place. Which means if I let's say give it some file, it will do this substitution in that file and make the changes in the file and write that file, and it will not print anything to the screen. 
But in this case, we're not giving it any file, right? We're giving it the data through standard input. So as you can see, if I do minus i when I am not giving it any file, it will simply throw you an error. So it will say no input file. If I don't do this, we will get this output. Instead of hello, we'll get shallow. But if I give this i, then it will give you an error. So this is why this third option is obviously not correct. If you don't give a file, you cannot use minus i. So I think this option, instead of minus i, they wanted to use i here. Okay. That would have been a correct option. So if you want to do case insensitive. And Jan, what is the trick that you use to create that associative array? Like uh, you just type Jan and. Uh, no, no, that is the... like not any trick. Basically, this is copilot. So I wrote one line, it predicted what my next lines might look like. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so hopefully, this one is clear. So let's move on into the next one. So in this, the question is a command my project dash auth takes password as an argument. Select the most appropriate ways which will ensure its secrecy while entering it into the Linux command line. Right. So in this, uh, basically, it is telling how can you uh, run this uh, command and give it a password so that the password is as secret as possible. So the command line usage is my project auth dash u username dash p password. Right, so the first way is you're directly providing it in the command line, right? So my project dot dash u pankaj dash p my secret password. So why is this not secure? Like, uh, how can let's say someone else uh, who has later access to your uh, system, how can they get back your password? Or basically, where is whatever whatever command you're running? Where is it stored? Is it stored anywhere? So let's try this. So let me open a terminal. And here I run uh, my password is 1234. OK, so this ran successfully. Similarly, uh, I, this could have been any other command also. So let's say my project, and then I give my minus p 1234. Right, so obviously, this is not a valid command. But this is still a command that I have run with minus p 1234. So now, if I open again and I open the, let's say, tail minus 5 of the dot bash history, so here you can clearly see that the password that I used is stored, right? So everything that you're running on your system, that will be stored. So my project minus p1234. So anyone who has access to your bash history file, they can easily uh, get your password this way. So they can just see what command you ran. And because you're directly giving the password in the uh, what do you call it, the command line. So this is stored in the bash history. So it is basically stored as a plain text file. So this is not very secure. In the next one, uh, you are basically using a variable, password equals your password. And then instead of giving the password in the command line, you are giving the uh, like variable. And it is expanded by bash, and it is uh, given that way. Uh, but what happens when you are doing something like that is, for example, if I do my project minus u user, so it will get the user, which is uh, like my name. So if you can see, user is my username. But if I now see the uh, last five lines, so here it is not visible. So it is showing dollar user. But because I uh, in here, we have also declared it in the same command line, right? So I've told password is this. So this is also one command that is stored. So here, if I let's say do it this way, password equals 1234. And then my project dollar password. So if I now open the bash RC, uh, bash history, you can see, although here we are not able to see the password, in the previous line, we can still see the password. So this is also not secure. So this here you can see is a secure way of doing it. So what we are doing is we are using the read command to read the input from standard input. And that we are storing in a variable. And then we are passing it to the command using that variable. So for example, if I do read r pass w, and here I am telling, uh, let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, here, pass. And now if I do my project 
minus p uh, pass w. So this command uh, obviously is running. So let me just use a echo here so it's clear. So you can see it is getting the uh, password correctly. So in that command, it will get the password correctly. But if I uh, just do the tail of like, if I see the bash history file, there you can see we only have read our pass w and then my project pass w. So uh, the attacker can see that I stored it in a variable named pass w and then I sent it using that variable into the command. But what is that password? He cannot see because it was only read from standard input and then it was directly passed. So this is one secure way to do that. Another way is you can, instead of using the read command, you can also use the cat command. So if you are using a cat command without a file, so the cat command will basically take the data from standard input. And so whatever I type here will be printed. So you can see if I type hello, one, two, three, one, two, three will be printed. So whatever you type, that will be printed to the screen. So this is the special cat that I have. Normal cat will just print in the same line. So you can see hello will be printed, hello. One, two, three will be printed, one, two, three, four. So here, if I simply do echo, uh, and then let's say minus P, and then here I do a cat here. So you can see it is now waiting for my password. And here, if I say password one, two, three, four, and then if I press control D to stop giving input, so that password is then directly given from this into the command. So here it is echo. It can also be something like my project auth. So that my project auth will directly get the value of the argument, which is password one, two, three, four. So you can see echo is printing it correctly, minus P and then password one, two, three, four. But in your command history, you will only have this command, which is, uh, which is not showing what is the password because it is taking it from the standard input. So the third and fourth option, which reads the password from the standard input are secure. Whereas first and second, where you directly mention or mention through a variable which is declared in the same command line, that is insecure. Okay, so just let me know if this one was clear. OK. So let's move to the next one. Just give me two minutes. I'll be back. Yeah, let's move on to the next question. So in this question, which of the following commands from the options will produce the output as shown below? So the output is like this, line one, and then some tab or space, and then line two, then line three, then again, some space or tab, and then line four. So we have a main page of the echo command, how the echo command works. And then we also have some examples. So if I do echo a backslash tb, it will print a and then a tab character and then b. If I do, uh, so this tab is eight characters now. If I do echo minus e, i, i, and then backslash b, j, j. So what is this backslash b? Backslash b is basically the backspace. I so think here we did a new line character followed by a tab, right? Uh, which one? The, the output desired is actually uh, yeah uh, first yeah. line and then new line and then tab new line and then a tab yes so these are just examples showing how right. it works so if I give uh, a and tab and b it will be same line instead of next line and if I give here i i backspace j j so what happens is i is printed then again i is printed 
Then because we have this backspace, it, the character goes back one character. Then we print J. So this first J overrides the second I, which was printed. So in the end, we have the output of IJJ. So similarly, this uh, V, which is a vertical tab. So it prints A and then in the, uh, so the cursor moves to the right. And then vertical tab means it goes down and it prints B. And similarly, a new line, as we all know, goes to the next line. So these are the uh, examples that are given. So then we have a few options. So here we have line one, new line tab, backspace, uh, backspace, line two, and then new line, line three, and then new line tab, backspace, uh, line four. So in this, uh, we can see line two and line four look uh, they're aligned, right? So, uh, although in this option we have two backspaces before line two and one backspace before line four. So, if that was true, then uh, the line two will be a little to the left of line four. Whereas here, both of these look in the same. So, this first option is not correct. In the second option, we have line one and then new line tab, backspace, backspace, line two, then new line, uh, line three and then new line tab, backspace, backspace, line four, and then uh, a new line. So here, the reason we have a new line at the end is because we have echo minus n. So minus n will not print a new line by default. So the new line will be required to be printed at the end. So in this, what we're doing is we are uh, separating the line one and the line two by uh, six characters, whereas a tab is eight characters, as is mentioned here, tab is eight characters long. And then we are doing two backspaces. So it's coming back uh, two characters. So for example, if we run this, go line one, new line tab. If I do line two, so it will, uh, and I have to do the minus E. So it will then look like this. So we'll have a new line and then uh, like line one, new line, and then tab and then line two. But if I give, let's say backspace, backspace, so you can see it is a little to the left. So out of the eight characters, uh, two characters are reduced. So similarly, if I give, let's say, two more, it will be like this. And then if I give uh, three more, it will just have one space. And if I give eight backspace, then it will look as if it's a new line. So this tab is then canceled by these uh, eight backspaces. So in the option that is given here, we have line one, then new line, tab, backspace, backspace, line two. Then we have new line, line three, and then again, we have new line tab, backspace, backspace, line four. And because we are using a N here, so we have to put a new line here so that we get the prompt in the new line. So this looks correct. So I don't know why this is not the correct answer. So in here, okay, so you can see we have line one, line uh, like L-I-N-E one, and then below that, we don't have anything. After that, we have one character. Also below that, we don't have anything. And the, after that, we have the uh, L of the line. And whereas in here, it is the line two is directly after the line one. So I think the there should be three backspaces. So let us see the third option. Okay. So in the third and the fourth option, instead of using tab and backspaces, what we are using is the vertical tab. So when we are using the vertical tab, what happens is uh, when we type line one, so it will, the line one will be printed and then the cursor will move into the next line and there whatever you print next will be printed. So here directly I'm getting my prompt, but if I now do a new line and I do line two, so you can see it comes line one and then line two. But instead of new line, if I do a vertical tab, so line one and let me put a new line after this. So line one uh, will end and in the next character itself below that line two will be there. So vertical tab basically moves the character one line below. So it does not take it to the start of the line, but it starts directly below the uh, character afterwards. So after printing line one, the cursor was here. And then due to the vertical tab, it came down here. So you can see in the uh, option two, where we had tab and then backspace, backspace, the line started after the line one. So we had line one, then a space. And then another space and below that we had the line two. Whereas in here we have that directly below the single space after line one. So similarly, after line two, we have line three and then vertical tab line four. 
So that is the third option, which is correct. So we have line one, vertical tab, line two, new line, line three, vertical tab, line four. And we don't have an end here. That's why we don't need a backslash end here. Similarly, we can also remove the last backslash n if we remove this minus n. So you can see this is also a correct option. So both of these are the same. So here we have uh, minus n, so we need to have a backslash n here. Whereas here we don't have minus n, so we don't need to have backslash n here. Echo will automatically print the backslash n. So everything else is same. So it is line one, v line two, and line three, v line four. So we are printing it directly below the uh, space after line one, whereas if you are using uh, two backspaces or one backspaces, then it is coming a little bit to the side. So in this, you can see it is directly below the line one. So that's why the third and fourth options are the correct ones. Hopefully this one is clear. So what does the backslash v do so we can also see it from here so it is a vertical tab and you can also see from the uh, examples so if you do a backslash v b you get b directly after a okay, so let's move on to the next question so in this we have which of the following regex are the most appropriate to capture the gst in number from a file and then the uh, basically rules of gst in is given so GSTN is structured with a consistent pattern uh, like this, comprising 15 characters, encompassing a combination of uh, alphabetic letters, all capital, and numeric digits. So it is like this, 1, 2, A, B, C, T, Y, 1, 2, 3, 4, D1, Z1. Okay, so the first two characters represent the state code of the business entity's registration. The following 10 characters are typically derived from the taxpayer's PAN number. So PAN number is usually like this, A, B, C, T, Y, 1, 2, 3, 4. So the, uh, you can see it is directly embedded here. So one, two, and then A, B, C, T, Y, one, two, three, four. So uh, if any one of you have a pan, you can also confirm that uh, your pan will also fall in this category. First five will be characters. Uh, then... there, is, uh, there is a, it ends with a check digit also. It's, uh, yeah, not... the last, last will be again a character, yeah. I guess. It usually yeah. will be a, you know, check yeah. digit. Yeah. yeah. Five characters, four digits, and then another character should be there. Right? Yeah. So in here, only the five characters and the four digits are given. So the next character is, uh, so in this, then we have the next character is the uh, entity number, which is followed by the default character Z. Uh, okay. The, okay. So we have the 10 digits. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Okay, so I think here itself it is not written correctly, right? So this is not 10 digits. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, so there should be another character here after this. So it should be uh, five characters, four digits, and then again another character. That's why. Actually, technically, if you read pan, sorry, you know, if, uh, the fourth letter of the pan has to be either a P for person. A, uh, C for company and uh, HA. So that letter T is also incorrect. Yeah, it has to like be a P yeah. or a C, something like that. Correct, correct. Or yeah. HUF would be like a. Yes. Yeah, so. Yeah. I think here it's just there, like. Uh, yeah, it's like a character. Know, like purposes, but uh, it's yeah. technically not correct. Yeah. And after this, there should be another character that will yeah. make it 10 digits. After yeah. that, the next character is the entity number. So after this. Uh, one two three four D. This one is the entity number, which is followed by default character Z. So then we will always have a Z, and the fifteen character is a checksum digit. So in uh, GST also you have a checksum digit at the end. So this uh, this can be one two three four anything. And uh, okay, so you can see in this line it the pad is given correctly. It's actually letter, not always a number. It can be A B C also. Uh, the checksum, right? Yeah. GST checksum. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this last one can be a uh, number or letter also. And in uh, the pan, you can see it is basically this A, B, C, T, Y, 1, 2, 3, 14. So five now characters. Yeah, now now the D is given correctly. Yeah. The first three characters, A, B, C, in this form an alphabetic series ranging from A, A, A to Z, Z, Z. Fourth character indicates the status of the pan holder, where T stands for uh, trust, F for firm, H for H, U, F, T for individual, and C for company. So only these are possible. The fifth characters, for instance, uh, Y, represents the uh, 
So this one represents the first letter of the pen holder's last name. Right. So if your last name starts with Y, it will be Y. If it starts with A, it will be A. And then we have uh, four numbers. So subsequent four characters are sequential digits from 0001 to 9999. And the tenth character serves as an alphabetic check digit. It can only be from A to Z. Right. So now we have to basically write a regex for this. So let's try to write this ourselves first. So let's say GST. Let's create a GST file, GSTM. And here, let us add this. So maybe some value. So I'm not sure if this ABC will work. ABC, DY, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, D, and then 1, Z, but. So obviously, we will not be performing the checksum to see whether the checksum is correct. We will just see whether it is like a, a valid uh, number. So here in it, in this, I don't think it mentions whether the fifteenth uh, one uh, is a character or a digit. So let us see what is the options. But we can match the before one. So let us create a grep. So let us use extended grep. So first two will be uh, the numbers, obviously. So the first two uh, represents the state code. So that will be number. So here we will use 0 to 9 to represent number, and then we give 2. That means we want to match two numbers. And then we have uh, A, B, C. So that can be any character from A to Z. So this will be A to Z present three times. But then the fourth character can only be uh, T, F, H, P, C. So here we can basically pro provide it in the square bracket. So T, F, H, P, C. So only these characters are allowed. And then the uh, fifth one uh, is again the pan holder's last name. So last name is first character can be any character. So again, this will be A to Z. After that, we have again four digits. So these are only digits. So this is again 0 to 9, present uh, four times. And then we have the 10th digit, which uh, is an alphabetic uh, check digit. So this can only be from uh, A to Z. After this, uh, so these are the PAN numbers, right? So after the PAN number, we have a, uh, where did it go? The next is a entity number, which is followed by a default character Z. So entity number, I'm assuming, is always a digit. I'm not sure. So if this is always a digit, this will be 0 to 9, followed by uh, the default character Z. So we will always have a Z. So I don't need to use A to Z. This will always be Z. And after that, there will be a 15 character, which is a checksum digit. So if that checksum can be a uh, digit also, then we will use 0 to 9, A to Z. Uh, if, it is, uh, if it can be letter or digit. If it is only letter, we will use A to Z. And if it is uh, only digit, then we will use 0 to 9. So in this, let us search for this in the GSTN. So you can see we are getting the uh, GSTN number correctly. So let us see what are the options given. So assume uh, we are using a BRE. So if you are using a BRE, then you basically have to escape all the curly brackets. So this, 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 uh, this, this, yeah. And then everything else will be the same. So here you can see uh, these are the options. So we have 0 to 9, uh, present two times, and then A to Z. So I have mentioned only uppercase, but the option states also lowercase. And that is again present three times. Then we have T, F, uh, H, P, I, C. So that are the only possible options. Then again, we have uh, A to Z, A to Z. And then we have 0 to 9, which is present four times. And then we have again 1, A to Z. And then we have 1, 0 to 9. And uh, OK, so here, uh, I think it should just be a Z, but then they have given A to Z, A to Z. So, this regex will also match just as Z, but this will also match anything which is not as Z. And in the end, okay, so according to the regex, it should only be a 0 to 9. So let us see what is the <coughs> difference between the first and the second. So everything else looks the same. Just instead of the lower case, they have only have the upper case. Right, so everything else is the exactly the same. So this is basically what we did. So the answer expects both lowercase and uppercase. So I don't think it is mentioned anywhere. Uh, but uh, this asks us to match 
both lower case and upper case uh, values. But the uh, TFHPIC, that should always be upper case. So I'm not sure if these first is the correct option or the second is correct option and this is incorrectly marked. Uh, but you get the idea. So the regex is formed this way, whether to include lowercase or not, that I have to see if the question is framed correctly. So in the third option, we are uh, basically using the same as the first option. But after the, okay, so everything looks the same. So instead of using A to Z, A to Z, we are using alpha. And yeah, everything else looks exactly the same. So the numbering is also uh, correct. So this one, uh, so alpha will include both uppercase and lowercase. So if this one is incorrect, then I guess, yeah, this one should also be incorrect. The option B should be the correct option. So we consider only uppercase, I guess. So here you can see, yeah, so only uppercase is considered correct, right? So the fourth option, again, is same as the all the uh, other options. So fourth is same as the second option. So we are taking only uppercase. So the numbering is always correct, and the uh, digit and alpha is always correct. But we are only taking uppercases. So yeah, I think the second option and the fourth option are the correct option. This is incorrectly marked as correct. So here we are using lowercase also, whereas it should always be uppercase. So option B and option D is the correct option in this. And I think this one is incorrectly marked. So A and C are the same, and B and D are the same. So in this, if we don't want to include lowercase, then uh, B and D will be correct. Whereas if you want to include uh, lowercase also, then uh, A and C can be correct. But then you also have to have the T, F, H, P, I, C. Those also have to be there in lowercase also. So you have to also, again, write the same thing in lowercase. So A and C do not look like consistent at all, because in some places you're allowing lowercase and uppercase, whereas in this one letter, you're only allowing uppercase. So B and D are the most uh, consistent and correct option. So hopefully this one is clear. Let's move on to the next one. So in this question, the following test shows a set of questions and their answers. Identify which question answer pair among the following needs to be corrected. Use none of these options if all selected are correct. So what is the purpose of the kill command? The kill command is a, in Linux, sends signal to processes. It can terminate a process, send specific signals for process control, or even request a process to reload its configuration. So this is the correct answer to this question. Next question is, the what is the significance of process ID PID in Linux? The process ID PID is a unique identifier assigned to each running process. It tracks and manages process along the, along the operating system to interact with and control individual processes. So this is also the correct. And in the third question, we have how can you check the resource utilization of a specific process in Linux? And so you can check the resource utilization uh, using the top command. The top command provides real-time information about. So this is also a correct answer. The fourth question is, how can you monitor the system performance and resource usage of all processes in Linux? Uh, you can monitor system performance and resource usage of all processes in Linux using tools like top, htop, or psox. So here, all of them look correctly answer. So yeah, the answer is none of these. So in this question, all the questions have the answers given correctly to them. So where the option is none of these. So in the next question, which of the following commands from the options will count the number of words starting with the letter C from the following text? So how grep works is given to you. So here is the question. So we have to uh, count the number of words starting with the letter C. So let us try it out. So let us first store this in a file. My name is uh, tongue twisters. I'll just call it tongue. So here we have, uh, if you must cross a horse or cow across uh, Cross a crowded cow crossing, cross the cross. Again, there should be a comma here. Cross the cross course cow across the crowded cow crossing carefully. 
Okay, so this is the tongue twister that we have. And we are supposed to print uh, which, uh, like how many words uh, start with the letter C. So in this, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So answer should be fifteen. So how can we do that? How can we count how many words start with C? So we should uh, cap C and the word boundary. Uh, yeah. So what will be the command? So grip uh, minus yeah. C, uh, yeah. and the pattern would be uh, I. Sorry. Uh, I for case insensitive. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Let's add that also. Then. Uh, cap. Uh, C. This one. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Word boundary. Uh, okay. Word boundary. Word boundary C. 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 Uh, C. So it should be starting with C. So yeah, the wo uh, words that start with C. C, right? Okay, and then followed by. I mean, oh, I guess I don't know. It's probably. If we do this, should be okay, right? So you want to uh, end the pattern, right? Yeah. And then we give the file. So this will print one, and why is that? Because you're matching it correctly, but minus C prints the number of lines that have matches and not the number of matches. So how can I print the number of matches? Minus C. Sorry? O. O, yes, exactly. So we can use O to get all of the matches in separate lines. And then how can I count? W C minus L. Yeah, I can swipe it to W C minus L. Okay, so this way we can get 50. So uh, this one, I uh, may or may not be needed. So in this context, I don't think I is needed because all the C's are small. But ideally, you should have the I. So the case, basically. yeah, you should ignore the case, even if a C is capital or not. So you have this uh, B, which is the word boundary. So if you don't have this B, then you will also count C's, which is present inside a word. So your answer will be wrong. So this is correct. It should be backslash B and then a C. So instead of backslash B, you can also have backslash uh, left angle bracket, uh, which will also give you the correct option. So this is also word boundary. So this explicitly means the left boundary of a word, whereas this means uh, any word boundary. So this is the correct way. So first, you have to get all the matches in separate lines using the O. Then you have to count the lines using WC-L. You can also see that uh, the minus O and minus C are given here. So the first option, you can see, we are using C directly in grep. So that will not work. As we saw, it will ca count the number of lines which has uh, the C. Uh, so this second option is how we are doing it. So my, the W here is actually not needed. So even if you don't have the W, it will work. Even if you have the W, it will work. So here, what we are doing is we are matching word boundary, then a C, and then uh, any alpha character, so A to Z, A to Z star so basically we're matching the entire word so in this case we matched uh, just the uh, first letter itself right so if i remove this you can see we are getting only the c but what i can do is i can also do a to z a to z star so we can get the entire word so we can get all the words that are uh, basically starting with c so either way the number of like the count will be the same so this will also give you uh, 15 only so you Actually, don't need to do all this. You can directly do backslash B and then C. That will be enough. So in this case, they have also matched the entire word. And uh, they have used a W. So whether you use a W or not, the uh, output will be the same. So you can see here also, the output, whether you use this or not, will be 15. And uh, after that, we have piped it into WC minus L to get the number of lines. And the third option, uh, instead of using grep, it uses op. So what it does is it will. Basically, in the beginning, it will have a counter equals 0. So we don't actually have to initialize this. In awk, automatically, a variable will be initialized to 0. And then for each line, we are doing for i equals 1, i less than equals nf. So we are basically seeing all the words, right? Because in awk, the default field separator is white space. And we are also assuming words are separated by uh, white space. So we are seeing if the uh, 
first character of each of those columns, right? So we are seeing if dollar i matches the regex, starts with c. So dollar i will be the first column, then second column, then third column. So if you must cross, all of these are columns. So for each uh, word we are checking, if it starts with c, then we do count plus plus. And in the end, we simply print the count. So this is also a valid way of doing this because here we are assuming that each word will have a space before that. As you can see in this input also, all words starting of the word have a space before that. And because we're only matching the start of the word, so this way of matching is also correct. And the fourth option we are using said. So what we're doing is, is we are searching for uh, a word boundary, then lowercase or uppercase C, and then uh, any letter, A to Z or A to Z, present as many times as possible then a word boundary. And we are substituting that with itself. So we are substituting that with itself. And we are printing. So minus n means we are not printing anything. And we are only printing when the substitution is successful. And then we are counting. So till here, everything was correct. If this was uh, basically, uh, OK, so in this case, it should print, OK. So the issue is, uh, if I do WC minus L here, it will print the number of lines that have uh, words and not the number of words. And if we are using WC minus W, then we are counting the uh, words. So this should actually work. So let us try this. So Z minus N, if I substitute the word boundary and then C or capital C, and then A to Z, A to Z. Star. Yeah, star and then back to HP and then ampersand. And we are G. doing it uh, for all the occurrences in each line. And then we are printing them. Yeah. And this is on the tongue. So OK. So why is this still OK? Yeah. So my bad. Actually, I forgot. So if you're using P, uh, P means print the entire line. Right? So what this means is if there is any such substitution is successful, then it will print that line where the substitution is successful. So it will print the entire line. So for example, if I, let's say, make it, uh, I add something here. So you can see that the substitution is successful. So wherever we did this, all the substitution was successful. But uh, P does not just print the part which was su uh, successfully substituted. It prints the entire line when a substitution is successful. So if we do this and we pass it through uh, sorry, if we pass it through WC minus W, then we get uh, all the words in, uh, like count of all the words in the lines that have at least one word that starts with C. And we are not getting only the count of words that starting with C. So we are also counting other words like uh, the, et cetera, cross. Yeah, cross. Et yeah. So this will not work. Although this looks like this is correct, this will print the entire line. So P will print the entire line and not uh, just the word. So uh, other than this, what we can do is uh, instead of matching these, we can match the opposite of this. And we can uh, basically uh, re replace those uh, things with nothing. So let's see what we can do. So maybe if I do this, starts with uh, not C. And then I replace them with nothing. So then you can see we are only getting uh, but we are not getting all the words, right? We are getting only some words. We are getting cross, uh, course, and cross, but then not all the words. Basically, if we can uh, invert this regex and uh, we substitute all the things that are not this, then we can basically do the word count and we can see how many uh, words are there. Then we can get the correct count. But this way, which is given in the option, this will uh, not give you correct. So here you can see we are substituting uh, that with uh, ampersand. So we are getting uh, everything. If I remove that, then we are only removing all the words that have uh, the C. So now we have the line, uh, like we have the words which are not what is matching. And if we do a word count on this, then we, uh, sorry, not line, word count. Then we get 13. So we can also then uh, remove that from this. And we can also get the uh, count of words that are starting with C. But this will also include things like the comma, etc. So this account will still not be the correct one.
So in this option, this is not a correct way of finding the number of words because P will print the entire line. So only this grep and this awk are the correct options. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. So following script is executed on a text file. Uh, choose the correct statements from the options. So we have a file, which a variable file, which we are storing the value of dollar one. Then we are using a associative array. Uh, we are using an index array uh, with name ELE. And then I'm setting the i equals one. And then we're doing for ELE in cat file. So we are printing the contents of the file. And from that, uh, we are iterating over each element. And we are simply incrementing the index. So the index starts from one, and we are storing ELE of one to be that element, and we are incrementing the index each time. So it becomes one, two, three, four, etc. And in the end, we set j equals to be one. J is greater than zero. J minus minus, and then we are printing. So basically, we are storing from one to let's say hundred or something, and then we are printing it from the reverse order. So hundred till one. So we are storing all the words in an array, and then we are printing it in the reverse order. So here we have to choose the correct options. So the first option is really is an associative array. So that is not true. This is an indexed array, right? Because we have lowercase a. So declare lowercase a will sorry help declare. So declare lowercase a will give you an index array, and uppercase a will give you an associative array. So here we have a lowercase a, so this is an index array. So you can see we are using numeric indices. So ELE is an index array and not an associative array. And the third and fourth option are at the end of the executing, uh, execution of the bash script on a text file, the last sentence is printed first, followed by the next to last sentence till the first sentence. So this is not correct. We are not printing it in sentence wise, but we are printing it word wise. So uh, this is the correct option. At the end of the execution, the last word is printed first, followed by the next to last word till the first word. And because by default, the IFS will be white space. So the contents of the file will be split word by word. So we are storing each word in uh, element of an array, and then we are printing the array in the reverse order. So we are printing it uh, in the reverse order of words and not sentences. So if we really want to do it uh, you know, line by line, we have to kind of process that like maybe uh, tr uh, dot with a backslash n, and then if we do that, probably it will be OK, right? Yeah, if you want to do it sentence, then yeah. First of all, you have to uh, tr the dot with uh, backslash n. And then and after that? Yeah. You have to also set the IFS to be backslash n, I think. So I'm not sure Correct. if that works. But because by default, it will split by white space. So it will split words. Mm -hmm. But if you want, you have to only like split by the uh, Backslash ends. Mm -hmm. Or you can uh, like set IFS to be dot in the first place. Correct. So then it will be processing in the sentence by sentence. Yeah. Yeah. So that is also. So in this case, it will only uh, do it word by word from the end to the first. So then it will be disclosed that there is no floating point number. So the dot is not a dot yeah. coming from a floating yeah. point. So yeah, yeah, still yeah. Still there, right? Exactly. Also, we have to say that there is no other sentence terminator like exclamation right. question mark. Yeah. 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 Okay. So hopefully this one is clear. So let's move on to the next one. So in this question, we have a directory to be dollar one, tarball name to be dollar two, and we are doing tar C V Z. So C means create a tarball. V is simply verbose, and F is the file name. So file name is tarball name dot tar and the directory to use is the directory. So then this is how tar works. Then the question is how many new files will be created from the above command for the valid directory and tarball name. So here tar will just create one file, right? So the tarball file. So everything else will remain the same. So the answer should be one for this. Yes, the answer is one because it is only creating a one tarball. So if you give a directory which has a million files also, it will tar it into one file. So that will be whatever is the name dot tar. So this will just create one new file, which is the tarball file that contains everything in the directory. 
Yes, hopefully this XBF is would be a more interesting question, XBF. Like, yeah, if, if you're it. doing XBF, then uh, like if you have a parent folder, it will uh, still create like one in the that folder. But if you don't have a parent folder, it will create as many files as there are in the tarball. So then you cannot actually answer unless you know how many there are. Right, right. It has to give the structure and uh, yeah, all that. Yeah. In this case, it's just create one tar file. So this is simple. So what happens to if there is a, I'm just kind of linking, we have got a logical symbolic link. Yeah. What happens? Like, you know, still comes. Uh, let's um, see. Uh, I'm not sure. Let us check that. So here we don't have anything right now. So let me create, let's say, our data folder. And then in that data folder, let me uh, create a few files. So we have a few files. And let me create a hard link to file one named file six. And let me create a soft link to file two. File seven. Yeah. So we have now all these. Now, if I go back, and so this is our uh, data folder. If I now do tar cvf uh, data dot tar on the data folder, so this is now created. So now I have this tar file. So let me create another, like go into another folder and let's copy that uh, data dot tar here. So here I just have uh, the data dot tar folder. So now if I do tar xcf on the data dot tar, so now you can see it has created a folder, data folder, in which everything else is there. So if I go into the data folder, so here you can see this will still have the symlink. So this is symlink mm -hmm. to this file two, and this mm -hmm. file six. Let me see the. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, so this file six has the same inode number as file one. Oh, okay, good. So that is a tricky question. Yeah. Yeah, so let us see if that is same as the original one. Uh, sorry, yeah. why, why do I have a minus i here? Yeah. Uh, no such file. This is one twenty two. Okay. Dot 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 dot. And then data. Yeah. So here you can see this is 44583.94. This is 44583.84. Yeah, so the mm -hmm. inode numbers will be different, but the hard link uh, relationship will still remain. So here also, mm -hmm. this and this is same, and here also this and this is same, but they're different from each other. It's almost like a deep copy equivalent of Java. Yeah, it? yeah, you can say. Yeah. Perfect. This is good, actually. It may come in again. Yeah. Okay. So in this case, we're just creating one table. So the answer is uh, one. So let us see the next question. So here we have a script PRN num for C in 987. Do echo sleep 0 0.25 uh, echo minus n dollar C. So we're basically printing without any uh, like new lines. We are simply printing the numbers. So we're printing nine, then eight, then seven. So it will print basically like this. So if I, or let me just write this, PRN num. And what this will do is for CN987. So it will sleep for like quarter of a second. And, oh, sorry. I think, uh, yeah, this should be for, should be semicolon here. Yeah. So do sleep for a quarter second and then echo. Yeah, not 71, 70, 70. Yes, 71. L, I guess, yeah. Uh, echo dollar C and then done. So if I do this and if I call this PRN num, you can see it will print 9, 8, 7. So it will have like a quarter of a second delay and it will print side by side. So let me also have uh, echo here so that it. Uh, why is this not working? And then if I call this 987, and then it goes into the next line. So this will basically print one by one. So now the question is, if I run one loop, which runs three times, and I'm simply calling PRN num, 
and then again i run another loop which runs two times and then i am running parent num in the background so what will be the output so in the first one we simply call prn num and when the method is running obviously we won't go into the loop again so it will wait till the method has finished so this will simply be 987 987 987 so we can confirm this so let me remove actually this and if i simply have this and i do for i in one dot dot three two and i do prn num and done so you can see it is 987 987 987 so it will uh, first finish one prn num then again it will run prn num and then again it will run prn num. so it will print 987 987 987 this way but if i have it with in the background then what should be the output I'm telling one, one comma two, right? So it will root, uh, do two background jobs. You should give the process ID, right? When you mm, no, it will not give the process ID. Output will still come to the screen, uh, mm -hmm. but it is in background. So what happens is it will not wait for the first one to finish before starting the next one. Correct. Correct. So it will start both of them more or less simultaneously. So the output so it, is, it may interleave. You are saying that yes, yes, it will be yeah. it will be interleaved. So it will be. Nine nine eight eight seven seven like that. Yeah. So it's like a Java concurrency. Yeah, but in this it is like uh, like it is certain. It will not interleave sometimes this way, sometimes that way. Uh, so randomized, randomized. Basically. Yeah. So yeah. So here it won't be uh, randomized. So here you can say it will always be this. Way. So it is nine 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 eight 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 seven seven seven. So because I'm doing it three times, but in this question it is two times. So it will only be nine nine eight eight seven seven. So if I make it two, so you can see it will be. Uh, why is where is the nine nine one second? Yeah, it will be nine nine eight eight seven seven. That's right. And we also get the PIDs, but then uh, the output of the echo will also be shown to the screen. So that is the output. So here, uh, so it will be nine eight seven nine eight seven followed by this six digit number, right? Because it is drawing yes. six. Yes, right. yes. So this one will be nine eight seven nine eight seven nine eight seven. Then nine nine eight eight seven seven. So everything yeah. will be in one line. Oh yeah, right, 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 right. There's no bachelor sequence. Yeah. So what is so we are asking separately. So what is the output of the first loop at the end? So for output of first loop will be nine eight seven nine eight seven nine eight seven. So that is the answer nine eight seven eight seven eight seven. Then what is the output of the second loop? So this will be nine nine eight eight seven seven. So we have nine nine eight eight seven seven. So this is twenty one points. If you miss it, you are done. Fifteen points done. Oh, is it? How much is it? Yeah, seven marks. Seven marks plus seven. eight marks. Seven. Fourteen yeah. points. Fourteen. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, like, hopefully, first one you are bound to get. First one is straightforward. Yeah, actually, the second one is tricky. Mm -hmm. The second one, basically, you're because you're running it in background, right? So. Uh, it will basically come here, it will uh, print 9, like it will wait for a quarter of a second, then it will print 9, and then this is waiting a quarter of a second, but the other one also is running parallelly, so that will also print 9. So in your screen you will get 9 and then 9, then both are waiting quarter of a second, and then whichever finishes first, it will print 8, and then a few milliseconds later, the, the other option here is the printing takes less than quarter of a second. That's the yeah, kind of yeah. Option, if it right? took more, then it will be unpredictable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the printing that's, you that's, can assume more or less instantaneous. Right. Right. right so that is. You know, in uh, same script, we never learned about uh, threading and concurrency concepts. Because yeah. Everything is happening in one cell. Essentially, it's a, uni a single thread. In one cell. No, so we learned this putting it in background. So whenever you have some cell, right? I mean, maybe a sub cell, but not going outside the cell. No, right. it is. Uh, it is basically. Uh, yeah, it is. I'm not sure if it's in the same cell or sub shell. I think it should create a. Mm -hmm. a, a it will have a different PID basically. It will have a another. PID, but there will be a PPID will be the original process ID. Yeah, yeah. PPID will be the. Yeah, same. so there's a hierarchy. Yeah. My parent ID and then the return will come back to the PPID. Once yeah. the result gets done. Yes, yes. But because like it has separate processes, so uh, basically like the CPU time sharing will be happening. So 
a few yeah. milliseconds to this process, then few milliseconds to that process. So it will look to us as if they are working parallelly. Parallelly, but it's a time multiplexing basically. Mm -hmm. All right, so that is basically the end of this paper. Just let me know if there is any other doubts in this paper. Which year was it? This, uh, this is 2023, 20, January uh, afternoon. Okay, okay. So, 2023. So, two years back almost. Yeah. One year back, yes. There are no questions from week eight, right? Uh, in this paper, it, there are no, no. So VK it is Git and storage and networking, right? So yes. yeah, in this in this paper we did not have. So usually the weightage will be on like a uh, grep, say a uh, said awk, then soft link, hard link, all that shell variables, redirections, background processes. But I'm not saying that VK questions will not come. So it may it may not. Will come. <laughs> so, I'm I'm not sure. So I don't set the paper so. I won't be knowing what will be coming. This is the git uh, in the commit push, all those things, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let me stop recording.